Welcome back to Ribbon Candy Hooking. I'm Diana. Welcome to this miserable heat wave of the summer. Are you having the same kind of crazy, unforgiving, punishing heat as we are here in New England? I decided today to use the heat to my advantage instead of just complaining about it. I had a little bit of dyeing I needed to do to get some of my skeins ready. I've got four skeins here and I've taken out four of my big mason jars uh, that I find at thrift stores and yard sales, flea markets, things like that. I've taken out four mason jars, four skeins of yarn, and I'm going to use this horrific heat that we've been getting lately as my heating source. Because when you're dying with your chemical dyes, you need to have a heating source. So I could use the microwave, which is not my favorite source. I could use the stove top and have a bunch of pans there for submersion dyeing, putting big skeins and yarn and, and wool strips into pans and expire because it's so hot in the kitchen. I could use the stove interior with casserole dishes still super hot and heating up the house. I think I'm gonna stick with the sunlight. I'm gonna use the sun as my heating source and I'm prepping some skeins of yarn. I always use Briggs and Little yarn. I use in our, in our shop, Ribbon Candy Hooking, the two skein and the three skein. These are the worsted weight, the soft spun two skein. So I take these out. I'm just gonna show you how I prep these. I'm gonna prep four of them. I've got here a little tub of Synthropol. It's very small because I'm only doing a little bit today. So it's just a desk draw. It's just something plastic without a hole. And it's got a little Synthropol in it. I've got some Synthropol in here about a ratio of 10 to one uh, water. Just like a drop of Synthropol, fill it up with water. Just a very little bit because it's so strong. This is what the Synthropol looks like um, that I get on Amazon. I get this big size that lasts all year, even with me dying like every day, every day. It still lasts forever. So I keep a little bit here in the squirt bottle so I can just squirt like a little tiny bit. In. There's already a little bit in there. So I'm gonna be using that as my soaking place. I soak my yarn for at least a half an hour. If I was gonna dye wool, like my door wool for rug hooking, I'd soak that for over an hour at least. But the yarn soaks up the water and the Synthropol faster. I'm just prepping it with the Synthropol so that it takes the color better. That color is gonna to want to strike, and it will strike because the sun is so strong, so hot, that using the sun as my heating source um, is just a great idea in the summertime. Maybe you live in an area where you get sun often, but I've been complaining a lot about being miserable in the heat, and this makes a lot of sense to use the sun to my advantage. When I open up these skeins, Right? These are like, these are called hanks, right? They're not really ready to go. They have potential to knot up. So what I do is I go around the edge and I separate them in half and do a figure eight with my zip tie, right? These are the zip ties, right? I know you know those from the hardware store. I do like a figure eight. So I wrap it like this and you see how I'm making the figure eight with the zip tie? I'll show you that again. I put three zip ties into one skein. Sometimes I do four. I just don't want it to play me later by getting tangled up while I have it on my swift and winder and I'm trying to wind it. So when I undo them like this, I'm gonna to wanna to put three of my zip ties in there, figure eight style. There's always one like this, right, that's already tied. So I stay away from there, cause that one's good. And I come to another place and find a place where I can secure it like this figure eight. I'll show you that again a little bit slower. Separating it here. Right, and I'm wrapping one under, one over. I'm coming through this way and making the figure eight this way. You can do it any way that you like it. You could also do it with twine. You don't have to do it with these zip ties. I'm going to do one more and then I'm going to finish this off camera. I'm going to leave these to soak again for a good half hour going into the studio. So I'll be there for more than half an hour, but certainly a half an hour will do it. You just want it to soak and really accept the Synthropol because the colors will strike so much better later when it's dying. So I'm going to put my last two skeins in there and then I'm going to, this is the part that does require heat and there's not much you can do about it. I've got my hairdresser bottles that I get from Amazon or sometimes the dollar stores. You want to be careful because you want them to really be the hairdresser bottles um, if you're putting hot water in there. You don't need super boiling water when you're putting your dyes in here to squirt. It uh, doesn't matter if the top is red or black or it's a different shape. You don't need boiling water, right? 
but when I put powder in here later, when I choose my colors to squirt with, I'm gonna look at my dye collection of all of my powders, choose what colors I want, put them into these bottles, write the name on it so I remember what the color was, and then I'm gonna put just warm tap water in there, right, to get them to dissolve. It has to be a little bit warm because it dissolves better, but if it's boiling, these plastic containers are gonna implode, and you don't want that because it'll spray all over the house and all over you, which is super dangerous. So I use these little hairdresser bottles, and I'm gonna prep a bunch of those so that when my yarn is ready, I'm putting it into the mason jar, and I'm kind of layering color in with the different color bottles that I'm making. I'm going to show you that just a little bit later. I'm in the kitchen and I'm just getting some of my stuff ready. I've been filling some of my little bottles here with the colors I like, right? And when I reuse the bottles, I thought this would be handy for you to know, I just take some rubbing alcohol on bottles that I've used already. You can see I had written the color on it and I just wipe it off with a little bit of rubbing alcohol so that you don't have to keep buying the bottles. When you take a Sharpie and you write your color on the side of your bottle, this is orange peel, one of my favorite pro chem colors, especially for fall. That one's a little wet. But you know that it's there and you know that you're gonna remember which one it is. So when I take out one of my new colors, I literally just, here's bright orange. Let me do some bright orange. You know, I'm not measuring with this. I'm just making squirt bottles and it's meant to be fun. I'm not going crazy with measurements like as if I'm doing uh, proper dyeing, right, for kits and things. So I just put a little bit of powder in here, and I'm going to fill this with tap water, put the cap on, and I'm done. And I'm going to write on the side of my guy, bright orange. Well, it's not writing, but you know what I mean. And I'm going to do all of mine like that. So I've got my colors all divided here in my bottles. I've got, th I like to do roses at Halloween, like pinks with uh, traditional Halloween colors. So I've got three roses from Cushing. I really feel that Cushing does the best with the pinks still. Wood rose, wild rose, and old rose. Uh, those are all Cushing. And then I've got, uh, for my oranges, I've got uh, Pro Chem Bright Orange, Pro Chem Orange Peel, and Pro Chem Pumpkin. Obviously I like the Pro Chems with the, with the orange uh, palette. And then I've got Cushing Red Grape as a wild card. I've got Tobacco Leaf, which is one of my favorite colors. It's a real shapeshifter as a wild card. And then I've got Dharma um, Deep Space. So those are, those are you know what, I think the pumpkin might be Dharma. No, it's not, it's not, it's Pro Chem. So I've got a weird palette of pinks, oranges, and then I've got a couple of wild cards, the tobacco, which is a really um, crazy color of brown that really takes, has a lot of different colors within it and does a lot with popping. And then the deep space is one of my favorite blues. So I'm just gonna take one of my skeins and I don't want it to be insanely wet. I'm just gonna start putting a little bit of it in and squirting it in layers. So I'm gonna put that part in and I'm gonna think about, I'm gonna start with my lighter ones because I want, I'm gonna use blue on this one and I want the blue to bleed down. So I'm going to start with, let me do some pinks. I'll do some old rose down here. I'm going to create layers and I'm going to return to a theme here. I want to be sure there's a lot of old rose in the bottom too of the mason jar. Let me see what I'm doing here. I'm not getting totally soaked at this moment. And then I'm going to, this little guy is stuck. What? Of course he is. Then I'm gonna introduce another color. Let me put old rose back where it belongs or else I'm gonna really have a problem. Let's do wild rose next. It's a little bit of a darker one. I'm gonna pile a little on top and get right down into the middle of the skein too. Now with this technique, I don't have the precision of putting this in a casserole dish, but I also don't want to use the casserole dish because then the oven gets turned on. So, thank you. So I'm putting a little layer of that, almost like making one of those mason jar desserts. Remember those? That was a super fun Christmas thing. So that was my wild rose and I think maybe I'll just go, maybe I'll go one more rose and then I'll go to blue. Let's do wood rose. 
wood rose is much more, as you can see, of a pinky, um, sorry, a brownie pink, like a cinnamon. And I'm going to look at my cake here. Yep, I see there's some action. I, I do want some white background. I don't want to lose that entirely. I like that, maybe a little bit more. You know what, now I'm thinking, maybe I'm going to do, I changed my mind. I like the way that tobacco looks. I think I'm, um, the brown looks. I think I'm going to end with the tobacco instead of the blue on this one. This tobacco leaf color by Dharma um, has so much green and blue in it. I don't know if you can see the flecks coming up already. It's got lots of little shades of other colors besides like the, the eventual brown. You know, and when the heat source, which in this case is the sun, hits this for a while, that is going to make the colors strike, which means happen. And I'm going to fill this with a bit more water at the end and show you how am I going to know when my colors are done? I'm going to know that they're done because the water is clear. It sounds crazy, but it happens. That means that the dyes have exhausted. There's no more dye. It's all in your material, which is a great deal. I'm going to leave that there and move on to the next one. So I think I'll do a little more water in this one, more of a watercolor look. So maybe I won't leave myself any white background. Set up the Loch Ness Monster here. If you do dye classes with me, got stupid names for everything, right? So let's see, let's do some orange this time. I've got my orange peel. I'm going to squirt the material, but I'm also just squirting into the bottom of the jar. And then I think I'm going to do, you know, let's do pumpkin. That would be a bit of a dramatic change. I'm going to use some of the same colors in these bottles. They're not all going to be different sets. And the reason is I'm trying to marry my colors, meaning have some colors in common, right? So if I put, for example, tobacco in this one too, both of these skeins are going to have that color in common. And that's going to be really nice in terms of matching. So let me do some tobacco here. Remember to shoot right down the middle too. And I think I'm going to just drop some blue on the top. So let me poke that in there. And let's go for our deep space now. This is a Dharma color. Got a bit of a layer keep going, right? And with this one, I want it to be a little bit more wet. I can see this side. I haven't done as well. But this is going to do it. Shoot it down the sides a little bit. Come down your side. A little more on the top. You can always be crazy and just add one more, right? One more little sizzle on top. See what it does. So you can see this one is well on its way. I'm going to poke at this one a little bit because I want more blue down this side. You can see how I've got a gap. The gap looks quite nice though. I don't know that I mind the dot gap. Well, here it comes. I quite like that one. You see all the color change on the top already? It does look like I'm canning something, doesn't it? That's likely to be super pretty. Let's, have, let's see what's happening with our first guy here. Ooh, you see how the tobacco leaf is doing all these changes? All these cushion colors of pink, all these kind of strawberry berry colors, appropriate for like a canning or jarring, right? And then heading up to our tobacco, really nice. So I'm going to carry on like this with these last two, and then I'll see, you, I'll see what I end up with. You're getting started with your layering here. You can see that this is just a reminder. When I pour some water on top to give it a little more water, a little more watercolor, you see how the dye from the top is disappearing, right? Because I'm rinsing it, it's not set yet. So that's why you really wanna go in at the end and whatever your top color is that you're trying to do, hit it one more time with that so that you don't lose, you don't lose that color on top. It'll just wash it right out. If you're looking for a watercolor effect, that's the way to do it.
but if you're not, you want to hit it another time with color. With this one, I'm just putting water in first and then emptying it, and then I'm going to start my layers up. So you can do that as well. You know how much you're getting when you start that way. Oh, it's hot in the sun. So you can see I've got my four pots out here with the different colors in them, and there are many of the same colors. You saw I did not start with a large amount of colors, but you can see that there are many of the same colors, like the tobacco leaf, um, the, the Cushing roses. That deep space is the only blue I used down at the bottom, right? You can see how much color change is happening, but almost, <laughs> there's a little bug on there already, um, but also, you know, how much marrying of color is happening, which means you're using the same basis of colors to ensure that this set matches. This set definitely matches. It'll be interesting to see how they turn out, won't it? So it is another morning and it's gonna be a warm one again today. It was very warm yesterday, so I'm curious to see what happens with our yarn. This is one of the mason jars. You can see the nice colors happening. See how the green came out in the tobacco leaf color? It just popped right in there. Color change in here looks very, very good. All that condensation, right? All that water. What I'm looking for is to see whether it looks like, water-wise, they're still dying in the water and it really doesn't look like there is. I'm gonna experiment with opening that one for sure. It's probably a similar situation. It looks like the color has really, what we say strike, the color strikes, it sinks into the fabric, it's, it sets. It's the heat that sets it. And in this kind of heat, it doesn't take long. This is a beautiful one too. Look at all the color variation here. See how when it seeps down, it really does its magic. I love using the I love using the hairdresser bottles. Of course, you could use a spoon. You could use whatever you want. You could use direct powder. I like using the bottles because I feel um, like I can really control where I'm shooting it. You know, there's a little zip tie in there. This one's beautiful too. Lots of pinky oranges. Remember all the roses, the Cushing roses. Oh, a little pop of green. Again, that's got to be that tobacco leaf, that Dharma color, and the colors, of course, sink down and create a color at the bottom. So they pool, as you would expect. So you want them to pool to colors that you like. And this is an autumn set, and I do like these colors. But you have to think about that. If you noticed, I was trying to put the darker ones on the bottom um, because I knew that they would pool, and I'm imagining what they're gonna blend like. So if I'm putting a bunch of colors that don't go together, I'm gonna get a very muddy brown or black, right? Which is sometimes what you want. This one has a lot of orange in the base, but you can see there's a lot of pink and lighter colors at the top. I think we're good. Let's open some up and see what happens. I'd like to dry these and use these today for a hooking project. So let's see what we've got. I'm gonna open up this guy. Ooh, see this looks great. This looks great. There's a little dye left in the water. I'm not over worried about it at all. It looks like this is really struck. Let me get rid of that little bit it out just to be sure but that looks great to me now of course oh that looks really nice now of course if you didn't want to use the Sun or you're not having a crazy heat wave or it's not this time of year when you're watching this video you can still do the thing with the mason jars and just pour hot water in it doesn't have to be boiling but pretty hot pretty close to boiling right really hot because you want the colors to strike and heat is what makes them strike let's check this guy next Ooh. Ooh, I like this one too. A little bit in the bottom. Again, I think we're fine when I'm squeezing it and I'm not having color loss. I feel like we're good. I do like that. I really like that. It's okay if they touch. This is really good. And you see, using the same colors is marrying the colors, right? When you're using exactly the same colors, the color is in multiple skeins and those are what's called married together. Uh, I love it when that happens. Let's check this one next. And make sure if you like this video um, and you like this project, look for, I have this whole thing as a kit with these exact colors on the website, four mason jars, four skeins, and all of the colors I used. So you could repeat this exercise in the dead of winter, this has more color in the bottom of it. So I've got to make a decision about whether I want to try to force it with another day of heat or a different heat source to strike the rest of that, make it deeper. Or I'm thinking about, do I like this color? It's going to dry a little bit lighter, but do I like this color that I've got? 
to say, I think I might like this color that I've got. I know that I'm using it for a background on a sort of autumn themed beginner class kit. And I feel like that's quite good the way that it is. You know, sometimes I keep my dyes like this for a while in my mason jars. I put them in the basement. If they start to look moldy and gross, I get rid of them. But when there's a little bit of dye left, sometimes I use it because I might change my mind. So I will save it for a little while and see what happens. I'm known for changing my mind on these kinds of subjects. And here comes the last one. Now this is the one that looked all orange. I put, I think, three, I think all three oranges on this one. There's still a lot of color left in this one too. Now remember how it looked like there was so much white left when I was doing it? There's really not that much white left, is there? It all sinks in in the end. This one does have a lot of nice purple in there too. You know, I like that too. I have to say, I like this whole color palette. You see, there is a little bit left in these jars. This is how much is left. I think I'm gonna save it for now because what I can do is I can spin, I'm gonna spin these, I'm gonna wring them out and put them in the, I, sin, I spin them in my salad spinner, right? To get that off, offline, like Amazon $20. I'm gonna dry them and I'm gonna hang them out to dry. And if I don't think that they're strong enough, I can put them back in the mason jar. But I really do like these colors and they are really only gonna dry a shade lighter. Um, so I feel like this was a great success. The heat has been punishing and miserable, but this is a good product that came out of it. So again, look for this kit and other kits like this on ribbon candy hooking that come with everything you need. The mason jars, the, um, the dyes already in the squirt bottles, and the skeins of yarn. So you can do the same project. This is two-ply Briggs & Little 100% wool that you can either rug hook with, punch with, do any of your textile crafts with. Take care from Ribbon Candy Hooking. I will see you next time.